Okay, full disclosure, so you know what this is. The following voices are generated by Notebook LM, the latest AI from Google. Apart from the fact that I thought you'd like a break from my English accent, I also want to know its limits. Um, so if you can tell me in the comments below. I think it's a pretty good imitation of human conversation, if a little irritating. The film was researched, fact-checked and edited by me, um, and I've either used my own footage or sourced some in. My interest comes from both the fascination for the explorer Shackleton and the recent discovery of his ship Endurance from 109 years ago, and because I'm currently making a dock on the Iron Age bog bodies, which are two, two and a half thousand years old, and I stumbled across why, in certain circumstances, organic material can be naturally preserved almost perfectly as if it was frozen in time. You know, it's those pictures of the endurance that really get to me. Yeah. It's just stuck down there in the Antarctic. Right. For over a century. Wow. And it's like someone hit the pause button on history, right? Yeah. Seeing the details, the wood. Yeah. It's eerie how pristine it is. How can something survive that long in the deep ocean? It really is a striking example of preservation, isn't it? And you're right to hone in on that word survive. Um, because it's not just about the environment. It's about removing the ingredients that usually lead to decay. Okay, unpack that for me. Mm -hmm. I think most people think Antarctica, freezing cold, stuff lasts forever. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be more complex than that. Way more. Imagine you're a bacterium down there used to munching on wood. That pressure completely throws a wrench in your metabolic processes, like trying to run a marathon while carrying a small elephant. And it's not just that they can't handle the pressure, it's that this extreme environment slows down their activity to a snail's pace. So the bacteria are basically frozen in time, just like the ship itself. In a way, yes. But there's another factor at play that's crucial to the endurance's preservation, the lack of oxygen at those depths. Right. I remember reading about that. It creates what's called an anoxic environment. Right, exactly. <laughs> anoxic meaning without oxygen. And for the things that usually break down a shipwreck, oxygen is like their main fuel source. No oxygen, no decomposition party for those microbes. So you see, it's not just about the cold. It's about removing the ingredients for decomposition, like oxygen. But hold on, there are still creatures living on the endurance right, like those tunicates and anemones. If it's so hostile, why aren't they munching on the ship? That's where it gets really interesting. You see, those organisms have adapted to this extreme environment. And the types of wood used to build ships, like the endurance, well, they're just not on the menu for those deep sea dwellers. It's like they're perfectly adapted to survive in this extreme environment, but they don't actually decompose the wood. Such a wild example of nature's delicate balance, even in the most extreme conditions. Precisely. The endurance's incredible preservation is a result of this unique combination. The icy temperatures, the crushing pressure, and the lack of oxygen. It's like nature created the perfect recipe for a time capsule. Pretty amazing what the deep sea can do. We got some wild stories about this, about these really well-preserved shipwrecks, like, you know, the Vasa. Oh, the Vasa, yeah. A 17th century warship, right. Pulled from the ocean looking surprisingly good. All right. Okay, so this Vasa, it was meant to be a warship, powerful, impressive, sank on its first voyage. <sighs> Not a good start. Turns out, top-heavy. Ah, uh, design flaw. But centuries later, salvaged, and it's like new. How's that even possible? So picture the Vasa's resting place. Stockholm Harbor, cold, dark water, not much oxygen, and brackish. Brackish. Mix of salt and fresh water, tough on the things that usually munch on wood down there. You mean like those shipworms, the ones that can devour, what is it, like a foot of wood a month? Yeah, those guys. Scary efficient. But funny thing is, they're not worms at all. Mollusks. Little drill bits, basically. And those drill bits, they like it warm. So the Baltic Sea is like a cold shower. Exactly. Not exactly a five-star restaurant for a hungry shipworm. It's like a Shackleton's ship, the Endurance, stuck in the Antarctic ice, but didn't just vanish. Exactly. Cold's a lifesaver, or at least a shift saver. Yeah. Plus, less oxygen down deep slows down the whole rot of the process. And it's like hitting pause on decomposition. But weren't there other things in the water, though? Didn't you mention gribbles? Uh, gribbles, yes. Like shipworms' tiny cousins. Crustaceans. Kind of like underwater termites mm -hmm. and just as voracious, but you like it warm too. The Vasa, chilling in the Baltic, safe. So the cold, the low oxygen, this unique Baltic Sea environment, all of it kept the Vasa pristine. A perfect preservation cocktail by accident. 
Okay, so we've explored this extreme environment of the deep sea where pressure and that lack of oxygen play key roles in preservation. But what about other places where nature hits that pause button on decomposition? Places that might be a little closer to home and maybe a little spookier. You're talking about bogs, aren't you? Bingo. I mean, mm. the idea of bog bodies, actual human bodies being preserved for centuries in those murky depths, it's both fascinating and a little creepy. How does that even work? It's not like there's crushing pressure like in the ocean. You're right. It's a completely different set of tools in nature's preservation toolbox this time. Instead of pressure, we've got acidity. Okay. Think of bogs as giant, naturally occurring pools of vinegar, although maybe not the kind you'd want to make salad dressing with. Okay. That's a visual I won't soon forget. <laughs> but seriously, how acidic are we talking? The pH of a bog can range from around 3 to 5, wow. which is about as acidic as orange juice mm. and much more acidic than rainwater. This high acidity creates a harsh environment for the bacteria that normally break down organic matter. It's like trying to bake a cake in a too hot oven. Things just don't turn out as expected. So the acidic bog water is like a pickling solution for anything that ends up there. That's a great way to put it. It's like nature's own way of pickling things, preserving them for centuries. But the acidity is just one part of the equation. There's more. What other tricks does nature have up its sleeve when it comes to bogs? Let's talk tannins. You know how a cup of tea gets its color and slightly bitter taste? Yeah. That's from tannins. And guess what? What? Peat moss, the main ingredient in bogs, is loaded with them. Wait, so those tannins in my tea are the same ones helping to preserve those bog bodies? Yep. Tannins are nature's preservatives. They bind to proteins, making them tougher and more resistant to decomposition. Oh. Imagine them as tiny shields protecting those organic materials from the ravages of time. So we've got the acidic environment slowing things down and tannins acting like tiny preservatives. Are those the only factors at play in a bog's impressive preservation skills? Well, remember how we talked about the lack of oxygen being a key factor in preserving the endurance? Right. Well, bogs are also oxygen-deprived environments. Think about it. They're basically waterlogged masses of decaying plant matter. Not exactly an oxygen-rich spa day. It's like nature took the idea of a Ziploc bag and supersized it, <laughs> creating these giant oxygen-deprived environments where decomposition slows to a crawl. Exactly. So you see, it's this unique combination of factors, high acidity, tannins, and low oxygen that makes bogs such incredible preservers of organic material, even something as complex as a human body. It's a reminder that nature's methods of preservation are just as diverse and fascinating as the things it chooses to preserve. Absolutely. It's like each environment has its own unique fingerprint when it comes to preservation. You know, it's funny, right? We often think of decay as just, well, things falling apart. Makes sense to me. But it's so much more than that. It's wow. an active process, a whole hidden world of organisms, bacteria, fungi, even microscopic creatures we can barely even fathom are munching away on organic material, breaking it down. So it's like a microscopic buffet happening everywhere. Exactly. And if those tiny decomposers weren't there, things would get pretty messy pretty fast. Okay, so you're saying if it weren't for these tiny organisms, that apple core I tossed last week would basically be, like, preserved. Well, preserved might be pushing it, but it would definitely stick around a lot longer. Yeah. Those decomposers are the real MVPs of breaking down organic matter and returning those nutrients to the ecosystem. Wow, this entire deep dive has been an incredible journey through the unexpected world of preservation. Who knew that decomposition or the lack thereof could be so fascinating and so relevant to our lives? It just goes to show that nature is full of surprises. And even in the most unexpected places, there are incredible stories waiting to be uncovered. Absolutely. From the depths of the ocean to the frozen ground, from ancient shipwrecks to prehistoric insects trapped in amber nature's time capsules, offer us a glimpse into the past and a path towards a better understanding of our planet and ourselves. Exactly. And as we've seen, the science of preservation isn't just about dusty artifacts and ancient bones. It's about uncovering the secrets of life, death, and everything in between.